Good evening, Harvest Time Bible Church Online. Hey, thanks so much again for tuning in to be a part of Follow. Follow me as we follow Christ. And that's our desire, isn't it? To become more and more like Christ in our life and how we live and the way that we go about uh, every single day, that we would become more and more like Christ. Hey, it is uh, a good day. Amen. God is good. Uh, you and I have the opportunity to grow in our relationship with Him. And uh, tonight, uh, again, I just want to be able to help you grow in your faith as you help me grow in my faith by yours. Uh, Romans 1.12. Uh, so exciting to be able to um, spur one another on, to help each other grow in uh, our relationship with Him. And uh, God is good. And again, just so thankful for each one of you and being willing to uh, be a part of this evening. Hey, some things for you to be thinking about uh, as you think about being on mission and uh, living for Christ. And what can I do in this day and time? What can I do in this world? Um, what can I do during this pandemic in order to make a difference for Christ? And uh, there's lots of ways to do that. Um, one of those ways is through our Colossal Cookie uh, Bake Sale. Uh, it's something that Diana Johnston does every year, puts together a team. And uh, all the proceeds are going to uh, Providing Hope and uh, the Honduras Missions. And uh, again, um, such an awesome opportunity. This Sunday is the last Sunday that you can order. So uh, if you haven't yet ordered, you can order online at htbc.church. Uh, or you can sign up on Sunday at the Welcome Center. And uh, we encourage you to, uh, to come be a part of that. And uh, there are chocolate chip, there's M&M, there's Combo. Um, one for 10, two for $17. And uh, I know that she still needs some volunteers. So again, awesome way to be on mission. Another way is through Learning Link. And uh, what is Learning Link? Learning Link is a ministry for students to help them in homework, uh, tutoring, mentoring, um, that sort of thing, and just helping kids, uh, kids and, and uh, middle school students and high school students um, as they uh, might need a little bit of extra help. That's going to be on Wednesdays starting April the 7th from 4.30 to 6 in the Family Life Center. If you are, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if you're interested in helping uh, with that, um, give Cindy Haas a call, 815-499-3696. Or you can call the church office and uh, talk to Paula, or you can call me. And uh, we'd be love to be able to get you hooked up with Cindy so that you can help with uh, the learning link. And again, um, just a great way to build a bridge into our community and help kids not only in our church, but also out in the community as they come uh, for uh, homework help. And uh, again, that is the learning link. Hey, follow me, Life Group. Um, this, what we're doing on Wednesday nights in person starting April the 7th. We'll continue to have a, I'll continue to make a video that will be posted on Facebook and YouTube uh, for Wednesday nights for those of you that are online. Um, but we are gonna start in person uh, April the 7th, 6 p.m. It'll be 6 to 7.30, somewhere in the neck of the woods. Um, and uh, it'll be in the fellowship hall. On the 7th is gonna be an information meeting about what we're gonna do. And uh, so you come find out about what we're going to do and uh, I encourage you to uh, to really pray about it think about it um, and uh, come and hear about it and again it's all about follow me as we we follow Christ so helping each other follow Jesus Christ hey Easter coming up April the 4th April the 4th services will be at 8 9 30 and 11. And uh, during those gathering times, there will be uh, kids ministry during the 9.30 and 11 o'clock times. And uh, that will be, those kids ministries will be happening in the Family Life Center. And that'll be for nursery aged kids and then uh, preschool kids and, uh, and then kids up through fifth grade. So um, again, that is going to be in the Family Life Center, um, 9.30 and 11. Otherwise, be thinking about how can, who can I invite um, and, uh, to be a part of either the online services uh, or in person, 8, 9, 30, and 11 on Easter. And again, look forward to, uh, to what 
what, what just that day of being able to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hey, uh, prayer needs. Um, definitely have some prayer needs. Write these names down if you would. Lyle Detman uh, is home and uh, and is continuing to uh, improve. And again, just uh, ask that you guys continue to lift he and Beth up. He was in an automobile accident um, and uh, is uh, doing okay, um, but has a long way to go. Pat McIntyre had surgery, as you'll be praying for her as she continues to recover. Pat Bohm, her mother passed away, as you guys will be lifting up Pat and her family um, this Friday at 11 o'clock at the McDonald Funeral Home in Rock Falls um, is when the service will be, and uh, ask that you would be praying for Pat and for her family. Pray for Charles Ewing. Uh, Charles and Sherry attend our church. Charles um, is uh, sick has been sick for quite some time, um, and hospice has been called. And uh, so if you would, just lift them up before the Lord as well. And then uh, Christine Spots, her brother passed away, asked you guys to be lifting up her family uh, as well. Hey, take a moment right now and uh, just ask God to speak to your heart. And uh, again, just take that moment right now. Thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity we have to grow in our relationship with you and our faith. God, you're good. You are so good. Thank you so much for all that you have done, all you will do in our lives. Help us tonight to be willing to let you speak to our hearts. And God, thank you so much for each person watching tonight. But we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you have your Bible, turn to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. Sunday, we uh, continued our series on mindset and asking the question, how, are your, how is your mindset these days? And uh, specifically talked about fear. Um, fear and, and in relationship to trusting God. What is it that uh, causes us to fear? Maybe fear of rejection or fear of failure, uh, fear of death, fear of, I don't know, whatever it is that... that keeps you from trusting God. What fear keeps you from trusting God? Maybe it's even surrendering yourself to God because you know, you know what? I know if I surrender myself to God, God is going to ask me to do something or he's going to have me talk to someone or he's going to have me go somewhere or there's going to be an issue in my life, that sin issue that I have to deal with. And all those things are definite possibilities of surrendering to God. But listen, the alternative is to not obey him. The alternative is to not trust him. That's not an alternative that I want to go down. I've done that. Been there, done that, not succeeded. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know anyone else that has ever succeeded in not trusting God and giving into fear. Fear, if not checked, it will wreck your life. And, and God, listen, God cares about your feelings and God cares about your thoughts so much so that, that he does not want fear. He does not want fear to have reign in your life. He's given us his spirit and his spirit is not a spirit of fear. The Bible says in second Timothy, but of power of love and of a sound mind of self-control. That's what God wants. Perfect love, as we looked at 1 John chapter 4, perfect love drives out fear. 
Why? Because we're being filled up with that perfect love. We are being perfected. We are being made perfect by abiding in him, by knowing God. And as we trust him and as we let him fill up our lives, fear gets cast out, pushed out, moved out, displaced. Why? Because our lives are filled up with God. See, see, you can't have one. It's like oil and water. They don't mix. One will push out the other. And if you let fear, it will push out. It'll drive your faith out. It'll cast it out. That's really, as we, what's said in First John, perfect love drives out, casts out fear. What we need to understand is the opposite is true too. Fear will cast out your faith. Now, not to the point that you lose your relationship with God. I don't believe that, obviously. God's word is clear. It's an eternal relationship. But it should sure drive a wedge in between you and your relationship with God. That's not what God wants. God sent his son who died on a cross, who rose again. He is the Messiah, the deliverer. He delivers us from our sin. He delivers us from death. He delivers us from all these things that can hold us captive and he sets us free and he set you free and as we looked at in psalm when i am afraid i put my trust in god when i am afraid i put my trust in god are you doing that are you trusting in god i love the story in first kings chapter 18 because not in the sense that i i have seen god work in, in the exact same way that he worked in in elijah's life this story blows me away but i have i, I can identify with elijah in so many ways so many so many ways elijah has the opportunity to see god do something beyond what he could ever think or even imagine. So so let's let's pick it up. First Kings chapter 18, verse 20. Elijah is have, having an encounter with Ahab. Verse 17 says, When Ahab saw Elijah, Elijah said to him, or Ahab said to him, Is it you, troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not I have not troubled Israel, but you have, and your father's house, because you have abandoned the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals. Now, therefore, send and gather all Israel to me at Mount Carmel and 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So, so Elijah is challenging Ahab. Ahab is the king. Elijah is the prophet. He challenges Ahab. And Ahab, being the narcissistic that he is, it, a narcissist that he is, it, is not going to deny the challenge. He believes, absolutely believes that, that Baal and Asherah are real gods that he's wor worshiping and he's leading the people of God to worship rather than the one true God. Exactly what he said. You have abandoned the commandments of the Lord and he's worshiping Baal. He's worshiping Asherah. And so, so Elijah challenges him. Ahab accepts. Verse 20, so Ahab sent to all the people of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And Elijah came near to all the people and said, how long will you go limping between two different opinions? Talk about our thinking matters to God. How long will you go limping between two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal then follow him. And the people did not, did, did not answer him a word. They didn't, they didn't answer him. Then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let two bulls be given to us. Let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it into pieces, lay it on the wood, Put no fire to it, and I will prepare the other bowl and lay it on the wood and put no fire to it. You call upon the name of your, notice this, lowercase g, God. 
your God, and I will call upon in the name of the Lord, notice it's capitalized, Lord, and the capital G God, who answers by fire, he is God, capital G God. So either Baal's going to answer by fire, or the Lord your God is going to answer by fire, and whichever one does, that is the one true God. And notice they didn't say anything before. Now look at this. And all the people answered, it is well spoken. In other words, all right, that's a great challenge. Let's see what happens. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose for yourselves one bull, prepare it fast, or prepare it first for you are many and call upon the name of your, here it is again, lowercase g, God, put no fire to it. They took the bull that was given them. They prepared it, called upon the name of Baal from morning until noon saying, oh, Baal, answer us. Shocker, there was no voice and no one answered. Just kidding. Not shocked at all. And notice what it says. And they limped around the altar that they had made. Remember what Elijah said? How long will you go on limping between two opinions? And at noon, Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he's musing, or he's relieving himself, going to the bathroom. Or he's on a journey, or perhaps he's asleep and must be awakened. <laughs> they cried aloud. Sadly, they cut themselves after their custom with swords and lances until the blood gushed out upon them. God would never, I'm just going to say this, the one true living God would never ask you to do that for him. No. No, he wouldn't. As midday passed, they raved on until the time of the offering of the oblation. Shocker again, there is no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. Elijah's turn. No, no, no. God's turn. I just said to all the people, come near to me. All the people came near to him. He prepared, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. Thrown down, it says here. Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two sheaves of seed. That's a lot. And he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, laid it on the wood, and he said, fill four jars with water, pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. And he did. Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. He said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. And the water ran around the altar and filled the trench with water. Wow. I don't know about you, but fire and water, they don't mix. Elijah's, okay, sorry, pun intended, pouring it on. <laughs> She's pouring it on. Pouring on three times water soak this puppy get this bad boy it soak it up so much so that there's everything's drenched so much water that the trench is filled the time of offering elijah the prophet came here and said of this o lord god of abraham isaac israel let it be known this day that you are god in israel and that i am your servant and that i have done all these things at your word Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have turned their hearts back. Check what happens. Is, can you imagine being there and seeing this? Wow. Fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stone. Are you listening to this? 
The fire consumed the offering, the wood, the stones, the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Let none of them escape. Wow, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. Hmm. The Lord sends rain as he said he would. And I love this. Ahab, Ahab takes off to head home. says here in verse 45, 45, I'm sorry. In a little while, the heavens grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. The hand of the Lord was on Elijah. Check this out. He gathered up his garment and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. He, he just saw God show up do something far beyond what he could think or even imagine was going to happen. He knew that God would, would bring fire down, but I don't know that he thought that, that God was going to do all that he did. He then, don't, don't, miss, don't miss this. Ahab rode and went to, what does that mean? He means he got into a chariot and was being led by horses, riding as fast as they could back to Jezreel, and in verse 46, the hand of the Lord was on Elijah and he gathered up his garment and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Yeah, he outran Ahab on a chariot. He ran by foot with the power of God, giving him, he, I mean, it's like he became the flash. Boom, he's there at Jezreel before Ahab even gets there. See, he saw all that. He experienced all that. That's not the end. Ahab told Jezebel. Do you know what Jezebel is? Jezebel is the queen. She is extremely wicked I mean like you think Ahab's bad Jezebel is like Ahab on like times 10 evil look what look what happens Ahab tells Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he killed all the prophets with the sword Jezebel sends a message to Elijah saying so may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. And then notice, verse 3. Then he, who's he? It's Elijah. Then he was afraid. He arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree and he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. Behold, an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He, I mean, all this stuff he's experiencing. Rise, eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. There he came to a cave, lodged in it, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, 
People of Israel have forsaken their covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with a sword, and I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Who's seeking his life? Jezebel is seeking his life. The people have turned. We read it. They, they fell on their faces, and they're saying, the Lord is God. The Lord, he is God. Verse 11, he said, go out, this is God, go out, stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke into pieces of the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, the sound of a low whisper, and when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went down and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And again, he repeats a very similar thing that he said earlier. Verse 15, The Lord said to him, Go, return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel Mehlah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. Hmm. You ever experienced that? One author writes it as the Elijah complex. See, faith obeys in spite of circumstances or consequences. Fear will keep you from obedience. Fear will keep you from growing in your faith. Fear will keep you from seeing and experiencing the blessing of God. Elijah just experienced maybe one of the most incredible pictures of God's blessing and power in the Old Testament. He basically missed it. Even to the point that he's asking God to take his life. Why? Fear. He allowed his fear of Jezebel to be greater than his trust in God. Elijah went from victory to defeat because he started walking by sight and not by faith. He believed the wicked Queen Jezebel's words more than he believed God's word. And he forgot how God had cared for him Every step of the way, God cared for him. Even while he's running, an angel gives him baked bread on hot stones and water. What? Fear replaced faith. And he ran for his life. We need to obey the word of God. You want to overcome fear? You must remember who you trust. And the way you're going to do that is by knowing him, by abiding in him, and by he making you complete. Whole, lacking nothing. Filling you up with his presence, his spirit. Perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. That's not God. God wants to fill you up with his love. God is love. Perfect love 
drives, casts out, gets rid of, removes, displaces fear. Are you struggling with fear? Are you, are you struggling from an Elijah complex? Remember God's word. When I am afraid, I put my trust in God. It's in his word I praise. It's in God I trust. I will not be afraid. What can man, what can flesh do to me? If God is for us, who can be against us? Don't let fear overcome your faith. Trust God. He'll never let you down. Let's pray. Father, thank you for my dear friends. God, I pray that you would guide and direct in each one of our lives. Help us as we strive to know you more, to abide in you, to grow in our faith. God, you're good. Thanks for your love for us. Thank you for your son, Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. Hey, my friend. I pray you have a really great evening. Have an awesome week. And I hope to get to see you on Sunday. Don't forget, um, we have more room in the worship center now. And uh, you don't need to sign up. Just come. And uh, you will not be asked to leave. <laughs> not, 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 not happening. We uh, are excited about what God is doing. Hey, take care. You are loved.